I'm here with Justin Leonard from the CSIRO. Justin lives in the Dandenong Ranges outside of uh, Melbourne, and he's uh, a bushfire resilience expert. So, Justin, what are some of the practical things that uh, someone can do to av avoid the risks of a Black Saturday? Well, I guess that the most critical thing is they actually have to uh, completely understand the level of risk they're exposed to in their own circumstance. So, to yeah. understand the type of fire intensity that might arrive at their structure and how well their structure might stand up to that risk. And so what are some of the key things around the house itself that you know you can do to improve the survivability? Well I guess it's a balance between house design and the type of landscaping elements that are immediately around it. Mm -hmm. But one of the, the quickest and easiest things you can start with is landscape housekeeping. So you deal with the landscape as like a, a set of concentric rings where you start closest to the house and look at fine fuel and heavy fuel elements that you might have immediately around the house or even stored under the house yep. and you, you remove those, you remove sources of fuel away from the house and then you move further and further out with less and less critical views okay. on how much impact they might provide. Fantastic. Well, what about things like materials? Are some materials you know, good for uh, protection in that sort of an event? Well, the materials that the house is actually made of are quite critical. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at um, just simple ember attack, which is in fact sort of more, more or less 90% of the problem, right. it's about where embers can enter the house through gaps, but also where they can land on any horizontal projection at all, like in gutters, on decks, on right. window sills, any small projection, okay. embers will build up and ignite. So, so it sounds like with lots of practical thinking, it's possible to really reduce quite a bit of the risk. That's right. It's, it's, it's not difficult at all to really embrace the fundamental concepts of bushfire attack and very quickly apply them with a critical eye to your own scenario. But it sounds like the attitude that you have is really important for that sort of an event. So if you've decided to stay and you've prepared as much as you can, you really have to have that right attitude, don't you? And you kind of be, be mindful as the event That's unfolds. That's right. And yeah, you must have a confidence in understanding what the event is and also have a have a an innate understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of your own scenario so that you can really make the most of what limited resources you've you got. You were telling me before that sometimes people don't survive because they don't realize when the fire has passed, they're not mindful of where it is around the house and the fact that they might be able to go outside and be more safe at that moment than stay where they are. That's right. Well, historically we've lost many more people attempting to flee a house yeah. that they're caught on foot or in a car, yeah. but out of the few people that actually lose their lives in or around a house, mm -hmm. it's it's more often than not that they've chosen to shelter in a in a confined space within the house, right. um, and they're more or less caught in an entrapment. So they failed to recognise that, in fact, outside of the house at some point became tenable, and they had an extra option to potentially wow. leave a house as it was becoming untenable onto burnt ground. Okay. Look, last question. As we become more resilient, you know, the challenge is we have to become more sustainable as well and reduce our emissions footprint. Are you, are you optimistic that it's possible to be both resilient and reduce our, our greenhouse impact? Well, certainly, virtually all of our research has indicated that um, most green building practices and resilient building practices go hand in hand in terms of bushfire. So what is that? water, um, recycled materials, use of um, heavy masonry construction, um, it, it, it all works. There's there's definitely a, a way to, to meet both simultaneously and they definitely don't fight hand in hand. So you're confident that building back green and building back resilient is something that we can actually do? That's right. They're, they're, they're not mutually exclusive. They're, um, they're a common pathway everyone can take. Well, we look forward to having Justin be involved in the Build It Back Green process. Thank you so much. Pleasure.